know, y'all, I wasn't planning to go live just yet. I was actually coughing, and I actually hit the button. <laughs> I was choking on my tea. Ginny Lovely, you never need to apologize because you're never rude. You were speaking from your heart, and you are free to defend me anytime you want. I do appreciate us allowing others to express their opinion. I mean, yes, I have an opinion, but that is by far not the only one. So, with that, no harm done. We love you, Miss Jenny. Welcome to Level 11 and your and everybody else's favorite true crime voice on the YouTube streets. Hi, Jill Kendall. Hi, Dana Lynn. Hi, Sarah Baggin. Hey, Ro. Jeff. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Hi. Hi, Lucy Lou. So, you are watching a live, my darling. And so that that means that if you are on replay, then you have a fast forward button. And I encourage you to use that as you need. But stay with us. Stay with us. We have a lot to talk about. So how, how open minded are we? So there are those of us that are like, well, I believe he's guilty. And here's why. And then there are those of us that are like, well, I feel he is innocent, and here's why. And then you have the people that are like, I don't know yet, all right? So I'm going to be challenging both sides today, and I have to kind of take a step back for a minute. We're going to be talking about BK in the Idaho 4 case, and will he get a guilty verdict? And there's a question I have. That if you believe 100,000 billion percent that BK is innocent, my little brain kind of like made me check myself because a question popped up and I was like taken back by it. And I'm like, huh, well, that's an interesting question that I've asked myself here. So now I'm stuck and I'm more I don't know. And I'm about to ask you that same question. So, before I ask you the infamous revealing question, we're going to beat around the bush for a minute, and we're going to talk about this whole idea that there's a lot of people that feel that BK is guilty are focused on this balance of probability meaning. So what they're doing is they're saying that it's more than likely to have occurred based on what they know, and therefore they're balancing this out on the probability means of proof. So more than likely it is to have occurred. And I'm like, but that's only for civil cases. That has nothing to do when we are talking a completely different type of case. So when you're looking at a true criminal case, it isn't about more than likely it happened. It's beyond reasonable doubt. Huge different meaning. But then I backed up, you guys, and I was like, okay, wait, wait, wait. The DNA. That's where I'm hung up. And one of my personal experiences through true crime is the the belief that sometimes the lack of evidence speaks louder to me in the truth of the situation. So the lack of evidence, and we only have DNA on a knife sheath, and there's no DNA in BK's vehicle that is associated to the victims. There's no DNA at his work that is associated with the victims. So this is what we would go by. You could all you could even go, okay, no car, not his apartment, not his work, not his parents. There's only DNA on the knife sheath. And so more than likely if we just went with this whole probable, you know, balance of probabilities, 
what is the chances of there not being DNA in these other parts? And so therefore you would maybe say, okay, then that's a probable assumption that he would then not most likely be guilty. However, <laughs> my brain, I'm a Gemini, by the way, if you haven't quite figured that out. <laughs> I also have strong Libra. So I am dual. And I have two sides to everything I look at, sometimes three, sometimes a hundred sides. But in that same message that those of us that feel he is more than likely innocent are using that argument, that same argument can be flipped against Brian by the prosecution. So sit down because that might be exactly what is going on that ends up getting a guilty verdict. And you may not be following me yet, but you will. So we have an all-star panel tonight, and I want to welcome our beautiful mods, Sassafras and Jenny Troglin. I thought Wildfire was here. She was earlier. Um, she may have to tend to some needs. Um, but welcome Cindy, Jacqueline, Lala. Hello, everyone. I need to keep going here while I got my momentum to explain to you that when you're saying, and I'm saying, so we are saying, I believe BK is innocent because the touch DNA is nothing but trace DNA. And I've said this how many times, you guys? Like I've stood on the very tip of a, a steeple of a church and preached to the choir. So I'm as guilty as I can get. But my brain was like, wait a minute. If we're going to go with the whole theory that the DNA was planted on the knife sheath and then the knife sheath was planted at the crime scene, they had the victim's DNA, you guys. They had everything they needed to put DNA in Brian's car, in his apartment, even in his office. And lo and behold, they could have figured a way to get it into his parents perhaps too. That'd be a reach. But they had access through Don Daniels. They had the they had evidence for ten days that didn't even have a proper chain of command. And yet it resulted nothing tangible that I can see they used against Kohlberger. Why would they have not planted the sheath in Brian Kohlberger's apartment. Because it would have had the opportunity for them to put the DNA of the victims on the sheath and put it at his apartment. So I'm not meaning to rack your brains every day, but I am. I'm not meaning to put you into a turmoil and go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, but I am. Because we have to be forward thinking and we have to really look at all of this. Why did they only, if the theory holds water, and we're like, okay, BK is innocent because they planted the sheath. Why didn't they plant other things? Why is a shoe print not a, quote, size 13? Why is it a size 10? Are you guys feeling what I'm saying? We might have an undertrained, hot under the collar, running with the evidence, like chickens with their head cuts off, cut off. But does that make him not guilty? Does that make BK not guilty? Now I want to ask you another question. But before I ask that question, let's get over here and see if you agree or if you have your own thoughts. And remember, I want your opinion. Your opinion. La la, haven't seen you in a while. You say the university, the Moscow PD, and the restaurant, and the former landlord. 
Good evening, Deborah Lynn. Hello, hello, Lee. How are you doing? Jill Kindle says, it's easy enough to get his DNA. Classroom and lab room for one. <coughs> And think about it, they already had the victim's DNA. Now, if they wanted to really make this look like, oh my God, BK did it, and they're the ones, the law enforcement are the ones that are like, okay, we're going to bring this Kohlberger dude. Let's plant a sheath with his DNA in the bedroom of a victim. And this would have sunk his boat. Let's take a Q-tip like they did in the Stephen Avery case with like one of the victim's blood and squiggle it along where, you know, you put your key in the ignition and make it look like when he's starting his car, he got DNA of the victim right there. Boom, case over. We don't even got to work from here out, boys. Why didn't they do it? It stopped me in my tracks. I'm here to be legitimately real. I want the person that did this behind bars. If I am to remain fair, I gave myself a strong talking to. I meditated last night and I'm like, wait a minute. To remain open-minded means I cannot draw a conclusion until I know all of the evidence, period. I cannot assume this man didn't do it. No more than I can assume he's guilty. I don't know what evidence is coming. But the fact to me, and I say fact, is that it bothers me that they would have not went further to frame him. Ah, Remember one month, thank you, lovely, you said, what if they made him a passy after it happened? Why didn't they sink his ship? Lucy Luth, who says he seems like a smart guy? I mean, there is that theory out there. I'm playing, I'm playing the other side for today so that it keeps us very wise on our feet. If we want to be able to understand this case completely, we have to be wide open-minded. We have to answer some hard questions. So that was a big, big question for me. Why didn't they sink his boat? Why didn't they plant victim DNA somewhere in a place that, you know, he couldn't deny? Like his shower curtain that was missing. Hey, Allie French. You say Dylan said she saw someone with bushy eyebrows, but I don't think BK's eyebrows are that bushy. But Hunter Chapman's are bushy, in my opinion. Hey, Translucent, you say, how do you defend yourself if you're high and walk into a crime scene? Damn. Boom. You get a gold star. That's a good question. I wouldn't know. I can't say I've never been high, but I've never walked into a crime scene, so whew, glad the two didn't mix. Dana Lynn says, at 11.11, I had to step back and stop watching everything. I had to rethink this entire case. I do think he is involved, but didn't act alone, in my opinion. KK says, maybe they thought that would look too suspicious, if they found the knife in his apartment, they know nobody would be that stupid. Well, and I agree, but lovely, we heard all these retired police officers that learned about the warrant for his apartment. They went out and word saladed the media. They were like, here's a full course meal of exactly why his boat is sunk. There will be DNA all over that car. There will be DNA all over that apartment. There will be blood. There will be DNA. There's nothing you can do about it. He is going down. He is toast. Right? 
That's what I heard. And in that, it would seem, what was the term we started with? Balance of probabilities then, using that phrase, that more than likely it would happen then, because it would not be something people would question. They're expecting victim DNA. In fact, it even would put a cherry on the top of that cake because they'd be like, damn, we know we got him. We know we have him. Truth turn coming through. So now I ask you, why was that not done if that was planted by law enforcement? Okay? So now we're going to switch gears after we talk to you. We're going to switch gears for a minute and play the other side. Bev says he has said some stuff about murder on his page. He also has bushy eyebrows, in my opinion. Hey, cowboy, welcome to A Little Living True Crime. You said no blood trail. They can't plant blood. Hmm. I, I believe there was quite a bit of blood in that, in that home. Susan Rusco says, Adam has some pretty bushy eyebrows, in my opinion. <laughs> Great question, Lori Williams. Laura Williams asks, why did they choose Brian? Huh. I have my opinion. But it's going to get really into the um, um, elite theory. <laughs> we don't have time for that today. Sean Cullen says, they got BK there. They'll keep him until the real shoe drops. You're right. They would have been way more obvious than touch DNA. Yep. Listen to me. There's problems here. If the cops are the ones that did any planting, <clears throat> they would mess it up like they did in the Steve Avery case. How did that get messed up? Well, there was eight searches by extremely experienced expertise, law officials, and state crime labs that visited that exact room. But miraculously, the two people, Lincoln Colborn, in the case, that are working for the county, the <laughs> are their bosses being sued, are the ones that find the evidence on the eighth search. And it just happened to be right there on the floor for everybody to see. Poof! It's there. Alright? The subject bleeds in the sink and the blood disappears out of his own bathroom sink and boom! Is planted, allegedly, in the RAV4 right next to the ignition where who would start the car? Right? Who has the victim's key? Okay? So you've got to follow through with this. And you've got to look at it. I mean, I could tell you there's an orgy of evidence, okay? An orgy of evidence in the Stephen Avery case. <laughs> and it's laughable, you guys. It's redundant. And there are so many problems with their state crime lab. And y'all heard about the, you know, possibly 300 to 600 cases because the DNA queen decided she was God. I believe in Colorado. So if we're going to preach it and walk this walk, we have to be open-minded to address the bigger picture. And that has me absolutely stumped. So the only thing I can say is, what are you feeling? What are your thoughts? Oklahoma Nana says, new subscriber. Thank you for your work. Ah, thank you for joining us. All says, and that is the name, by the way. Also, did they take the size 13 shoe off his foot in real time after checking the big toe like they did at the mall when they were kids? I feel like David Barocci and some Sigma Chi bros helped, in my opinion. Robin Davis Duckworth says, is BK the confidential informant? I mean, why not? Going after big, big fish while everyone thinks him? That is the subject or suspect. Good questions, you guys. Good questions. 
Sarah Fagan says maybe the Cowboys planted the evidence, in my opinion. Why didn't they plant more? I mean, I just don't understand that yet. Michaela Miller says sometimes I think maybe Brian planned, planned it or something. Honestly, I don't know. I did my own reading and pendulum questions and same things aren't adding up, in my opinion. Juliet Maishitsu says the shower curtain missing to me is hilarious. His vegan ways are so much he probably has issues with germs. So I can see that he would have wouldn't have had a shower curtain due to the germs, etc. on it. You could be right. Butterflies and Camo says, Good afternoon, new subscriber. I'm really enjoying this. Thank you. Well welcome, lovely, welcome. Open mind perspective says so true. So you guys, let's take it back over to the um Brian K is innocent team for a minute for rebuttal. Okay. We're gonna go back over there for rebuttal. So what if the police or law enforcement had nothing to do with the planning, but the brat boys did it? Well, then we really got to look at that because then we're talking about a connection to get BK's touch. And then I have more questions. Why would Brian? So I'm like, okay, that's the innocent side, right? Let, look, before I get onto the guilter side, I want your, your impressions on that, right? So maybe a frat boy did it. Oklahoma Nana says with the knife video, how can they not, hold on, it moved. How can they not look at the first boys, frat boys now? This is crazy. Deborah Lynn says there are so many plausible scenarios I've even contemplated since he's being separated from everyone. In reality, he may be undercover all along to help bring down this illicit substance mess. I mean, at this point, I feel like it's, I can't put a stake in the ground because it's all mud. It's just too unclear. And that's why I am working on other cases because, I mean, you can only bang your head on the wall so many times before you realize it's just insanity to torture your, your brain, you know? And so I have to look at both sides and what do I really feel? And I really feel truly there would be more evidence against BK if law enforcement was the one planting the evidence. Are they helping it along? Yes, I do believe they're helping along his guilt because I believe they absolutely believe he is guilty. And so therefore, they're not helping the defense. I believe they're cutting and snipping. And I would believe, in my humble opinion, they should get it for tampering with evidence if it is found out that the defense finds that the prosecution in some manner disconnected audio and video in any piece of evidence. That's my opinion. But would they plant such weak evidence and then that's it? That's all they're going to do. Open Mind Perspective says there'll be no way he's tied to Brappies. It's too old. He's too old. It is definitely between him and a training officer, in my opinion. Ah, says Barry was brought up, was brought on to bring up the overall GP of the frat. He was Ethan's tutor. What could Ethan see from his room? All great questions, ah. Translucent said he would have filmed after the fact to ensure they couldn't plant stuff. Not sure he could film anything on. That would have been interesting to have a hidden camera in your house when the police came in. <laughs> huh. Especially if you're innocent. Sassy says, pretty much all the dirty corrupt leaders were all once frat boys, you guys, in my opinion. Sadly, 
They are taught they are untouchable from gross behaviors and actions, in my opinion. Sarah Baggins says, yes, let loose of the goat, please. All right. You guys, this is our goat. It is a mascot, and it is us releasing frustration. It is a scream. If your boss is listening or you have headphones on, this is your warning. Three, two, one. Right? Today has been a roller coaster of emotions for sure. MD said, Why the gag order? What are they hiding? Who are they protecting? Oklahoma Nana says, Why would BK have so much hate? on for people he's a patsy la french says remember to throw the thumbs up on this live as well thank you lovely thank you lovelies thank you michaela miller says i want to know how brian felt about the idol four prior and now well melissa french it has been forever i haven't seen you in days and in a long time love seeing these beautiful familiar faces how does one send you a gift? Oh, lovely. Email me. Email me. I don't really need any gifts, but thank you, lovely. I'm very well taken care of. I really am by the divine, you know. I just get up every day and get on here and work on here and tend to my little house and pay my bills and mind my own business. <laughs> hey, Beverly Ward, you say the thing about BK... I find sus. He went 100% out of his way. He left no fingerprints in his home, his parents' home, and trash. No wonder why no shower curtain. He didn't want fingerprints picked up. It does remind me of Scott Tadich in the um, Stephen Avery case where he was, like, picking up all his cigarette butts and stuff. Bothers me. Bothers me. Now, there are other things from a guilter's perspective. And that is, you know, he waived his right to a speedy trial, even though it's like he waives his right to a speedy trial, and it's almost as if the defense is trying to find a loophole. I mean, she said the footage of Brian's car, something to that effect, right? She wasn't talking about Brian Kohlberger's car video or something like that. So it's not even like she's presenting he didn't do it yet. He didn't even take the stand and say, I'm not guilty. So these are the things that I'm like, wait a minute. Why is the defense lawyer saying Brian's car? Is it Brian's car? We still don't know where he was driving. What if you get in here and I get in here and the jury gets in the box and we find out that is Brian's car? What then? I'm not saying Brian did it alone, but I'm saying, what if? So we really need to keep an open mind till we really see all of the evidence. That's what I feel. I really feel that way. It's not as loud to go. Yeah, I didn't put it right up to the mic. I didn't want to blow everybody's eardrums, huh? Good question. Beverly wants to know, and I'll propose it as well. I'll stand by her because that's what I'm doing today. I am playing that part where what is I'm playing the jury role, right? I'm playing the jury role. Beverly Ward, how would Brat Boys get his DNA? You get a gold star. Boom. Oklahoma Nana, do we call you Mama D? I've been wanting to chat on live for a while. Honey, you can call me Mama D. You can call me RD. I'm also known as Rubber Ducky. I, I listen. You can call me 1111. <laughs> Aw, thank you. Sheila Field says they knew about BK for two weeks before his trip back home with his dad. Why didn't they just check his apartment? They aren't sure it was BK's car. All right, so let's go with that for a minute. 
What if they what if they had access to BK's apartment before he left? What if that's how the DNA got on the sheath? And so they don't want to talk about his apartment because they don't want to get into, you know, the whole, yeah, we were here before illegally or something like that. Okay, let's play that out. But still, they would have had the DNA of the victim, you guys. Why would they have not had like, I don't know, grab one of his shoes and victim DNA transfer and throw it in the closet? Make it look like, you know, a black pair of tennis shoes? I just can't understand why if they're planting all this, if he's being framed, why do we only have weak trace DNA? Sarah Pagan says, Mama D, I tried to get the Masonic Bible from my husband, but he won't let me read it. He said that it wasn't for females. Sorry. Oh, that's kind of creepy. Lucy Lou who says, I thought the white car in front of the house was Maddie's. Hi, Annette, and welcome, honey. Rose says, why didn't Ellie question him instead of waiting until he got to Pennsylvania? Well, that's a good question, too. Does he have guilty knowledge? Does BK have guilty knowledge? Dina Lynn says, why does Judge Judge keep bringing up Kopaka? Well, he only brought it up once to my knowledge, but he did bring it up, and it was like a huge boom, right? All says, I think in my opinion that Barry was connected to BK via the CSI lab at Washington and some drone engineering stuff Barry was doing. Now, that could be interesting. See, another person agrees, wants to know the answer. Grammy H. says, he did class in WSU lab. Brass have friends in WSU lab. Question mark? Question mark? Tickety boo. Hello, love. How would Kaylee afford that car? Must have been costly repayments plus insurance. <laughs> Interesting. Allie feels in her opinion that it's very possible Copaca could have been involved in her opinion. Oklahoma Nana says, if you can read Energy's vibes, you can agree. BK just does not give out the vibes for this. On my end, Jack D does light the room with guilt, Davids, etc. Well, today I'm making sure that we are fully aware that that is a big problem for me. And I think it should be a problem for a lot of people. It takes L.E. out of the planting situation for me. It just removed them. And if I can take suspects off the list for taking that action of actually planting something that would be in that direction, and I have to for me, and that doesn't mean you agree. You can have the opposite opinion. I love you. I do. Because it takes all of us to do this. But for me, I have to take off the LE, in my humble opinion, would have planted more DNA. Ted Matheny says, Judge Judge never brought up Kopeka, ever. Well, he doesn't fully say the name, but... I mean, it sounds very close, like he caught himself at the very last syllable. So I'll just say that, in my humble opinion. Feel free to, like I said, feel free to disagree. Melissa French says, I think you will love it. I painted it just for you. Ah, thank you, love. Yeah, email me. I would love that. Anything handmade, I love. Glenda Jennings says, Open Mind, I love your channels, your channel. Open Mind Perspective says, I love how soft your voice is. I'm learning a lot about tone of voice and how it makes one feel. Your tone makes me feel comfortable and relaxed. I'm definitely going to practice this. And visit Open Mind Perspective's channel. 
see if it's, you know, everybody needs to, to check each other out. Be supportive. 12 months, a full year for candy wrapper 420 as a starlight seed. And she says, love Mama D, love watching your channel. Oh, candy wrapper, I love you so much. Thank you. I am so grateful and thankful for you. I mean, it takes, it takes a certain amount of monetary value to be able to do this like I do. And there are those of you that support me, literally. And I want to say thank you. I wake up every day and I say prayer for the kids. I truly do. I protect all my children. And I think of the children, all the world's children, as mine. That's why I'm Mama D. <laughs> anyway, and in that, I also say thank you for you. Because without you, I can't do this. So you matter to me, you guys. You matter a lot. Oh, says, do you still have the footage of that disaster relief cr cleanup crew? Clue. I can't talk. Cleanup crew. I seriously thought I recognized at least one of those boys. Oh, Lord. Are you talking about the cowboys? I still have that footage. Melissa French says, Mama D, can you do a T-chart with who could or couldn't have planted the DNA? I don't know. That's a lot of work, honey. That's a huge amount of work. I'm just going where I'm guided. And this is where I've been guided. KK, a lot of people think he made a mistake and started to say Copaca instead of Koberger. So you're not the only one that heard that. Thank you, love. Linda Jennings says, I think BK is a cleanup guy. Came in after the pack. I think DM put that knife sheep in there. She is not who she appears to be, in my opinion. And could that be? Could Copaca? Whoa, I did it. Shit. Could Coburger be cleanup crew? No. Not in my opinion. There is no way in hell BK could be the cleanup crew. Because I'll bet you money, he freaks out sight of blood because he's a germaphobic. I bet you money. And that's one way that I'm questioning who framed Kohlberger if it wasn't law enforcement. Because in my humble opinion, BK probably couldn't do this. Because a lot, a lot of people that are vegans cannot handle the blood. They can't handle that. So, in my opinion, I have pulled out law enforcement for me personally. Doesn't mean you have to, but I've ruled out law enforcement as a planter of the sheaths. And now I want to know who the hell planted the sheaths. Don't you? Don't you? Hey, Jennifer Swain. Oh, my gosh. She sent a giant red, huge snooper chat. Thank you, Jennifer Swain. Thank you. Oh, from the bottom of my heart, that's sweet. I appreciate you, hon. Michaela Miller says, I think he planted it, in my opinion. You mean BK? You think BK planted it just to see if he could, like, maybe, maybe BK was like, okay, I can't get hired by the cops. I want to be in law. I want to be known. I want to be famous for law. I'll work on the other side of the coin. I'll be the bad guy. Is that what you're saying? Or did I totally miss a mark? <laughs> Oh, wow. Honeybee. Honeybee gifted us 10 memberships. Let's see if I can do this really quick. Dana Lynn, translucent, cherry, sh cherry 63, storm dancer. Helene 757, Angela Smith, Joni. Tina Skullscar and Ellie Cat, as well as Care in Canada. Welcome all of you to our Starlight all-star panel. Love you guys. Thank you so much. You guys, I have the most generous 11-11 family in the world. 
You guys are incredible. Truly. Gemini 65 agrees to disagree, she says. I think Ellie planted it. And see, I love you, Jim. I love you. And she's a Gemini, and I'm a Gemini. And we still are madly in love with each other, right? So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. We can agree to disagree. Nansai 7 says, could be case education and interest have been a motive to be framed for such a crime. In my opinion, BK has a personality of wanting to be in the know and perhaps learn too much. Boom! Nansai, you get a gold star. Because that's an excellent point. Uh, or question, I should say. Excellent question. Melissa French, I hope you got my email. I sent you you check your stamp holders. Okay, love, I will do. I will do. Thank you. How do you know if you received a membership? Tina Cassie, honey, you'll know because you'll like change color um, and it'll tell you. It'll be like, you are now a member and check out your perks. You'll get like little light ups. And how do you become a member? Well, you can either Use a link to get into it, which I posted, and become a Starlight Panel member, where we do tarot readings on Sunday afternoons. Or you can wait around because we have an amazing family here that gift a lot. And because they are so generous with their love, um, and it's a win-win, you might be lucky enough to be the receiver. YouTube chooses who receives the gifts, but you can help by enabling the I will receive gifts button. How'd I do? Huh? <laughs> Michaela Miller says, yep, Dylan planted the knife. This was all planned out. In my opinion. Oz says, whoa, y'all, David Barocci has just been made an interim for U of I in their government relations legislation session. Dang! Whoa, if that is true, oh my golly. Groomers always reward. And it could be his hard work got him there. I'm just saying the timing is phenomenally suspicious. 333 here in chat. Make sure and show your love to everybody on the like button. And if you're not subscribed, why the heck not? You're still here. You know you're having a good time. I lie you. Melissa French says, Mama D, my husband said maybe Brian knew too much of what truly was going on and had to be dealt with. Okay. I can see that too. Open Mind Perspective says, it is possible, you never know. These days, people have become quite creative, especially when competition has become such so much larger than usual due to lack of jobs. Debbie Thomas says, love it when you also did readings for Zodiac signs. That's very energy consuming. <laughs> and, you know, even though a lot of people would resonate and so forth, I felt like it, we weren't reaching as many folk, you know, for the energy. And so I believe where you invest your energy is where it's going to grow. But if you're growing like not enough to survive on, you might need to not be stubborn. You might need to shift gears and look at what else are you good at. I happen to be like a human lie detector. Um, and so I went into tarot and I went into true crime and all this. And there's a lot of human lie detectors out there. Really, you might be one. A lot of us flock together. Um, in that being said, we're going to be starting the, it's called human lie detector. And it's another channel I'm starting. And it'll be in April. So watch for that. It'll be closer to the middle of April, if not the end of April, before that channel is even really rolling. Um, but I will be getting the link up. It does have subscribers. It does have members. Because we're in the middle of totally the tower moment, stripping that channel down and starting fresh. But we have all these amazing members. And they're all Moonies. No matter what, you'll always be a Moonie over there. And so we're going to keep the Moonies. 
but we're also going to be talking about human lie detectors. If you're a human lie detector, get over there. All you got to do is sub. It's absolutely free. I'll get you the link soon. Dana Lynn says, don't y'all think they are waiting for emotions to slow down or maybe the students are going to have before court. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Debbie says, okay, no worries. We love without the Zodiac greetings. Aw, I love you guys. You're just incredible. Mamadi, someone did a video of why they combined the dumpster trash all together instead of separate. And it made me think of your driver's email pulling a bait switch move like Fast and Furious movie. Are you telling me they dumped all the dumpsters together in the Idaho poor case? Are you literally telling me, Melissa, that they took all the dumpsters that they collected in evidence and just dumped them in one pile? Glenda Jennings says, I believe BK is mind controlled. Dee implanted the sheath. The kids at the food truck watched as Z and E got unalived, in my opinion. They were saying their names before the girls got there, in my opinion. <laughs> Okay, Sassy is one of our beautiful moderators, as is Jenny. Sassy says, click the gift icon above chat and hit accept gifts setting to allow future memberships giftings. Ah, Canadian true crime buff. Welcome to our all-star panel. Love it, love it. All right, lovely Luz. Think about that balance of probability. I mean, face it, this case could be called Brian, you know, coincidence, Kohlberger type thing here. <laughs> uh, Translucent, Translucent says, no, they allowed the bins to be emptied and later had to go back to the pile to check for evidence. Oh, shit. Oh, Lord. Linda Jenkins says a video was made, snuff film in my opinion, and it's probably on the dark web. When I'm paraphrasing your statement, it's just to protect us legally. Dana Lynn says, I have never heard this discussion, but here I go. Do y'all remember the blood outside? Yes, Dana Lynn, I do. If it's blood, y'all. I'm just saying, why is it so red? We all know that dried blood gets almost like a dull brown. I mean, we all know this, especially if you're a female, because we've had menstruation cycles. So I'm just asking you, why was it still red? Deborah Lynn says, months ago, months ago I truly thought B.I. was having a bling with B.F., I think she meant BK, was having a fling with BF. It was kept on the down low. The night he was driving, she was with him. BF was with him all night, so he took her back home, and then he left, in my humble opinion. Jenny Traglin says, what if BK was stalking one of the Vicks, caught word of the crap going down, used to schooling, cops shut him down by making him a passy. Well, that'd kind of be weird. That'd be like, you know, a protective stalker that got caught. <laughs> uh, and framed. Could be right. I don't know. Because the thing is, is you don't know and I don't know. And we don't know all the evidence. It's going to be interesting when this finally gets to court. Oh, by the way, hold on a moment. Make sure and check out our other video. We have got breaking news in um, the Soto case, Madeline Soto. Breaking news. Okay, you may already know this because it's breaking. It's like, boom, it exploded today. 60 additional charges for Stephen Stern. Unrelated, whatever that means. None of them for the homicide of Maddie. 
I just heard the song because Born to be Wild is here. Born to be wild. <laughs> I could sing it, but I can't. I can't sing. So I think this is far more sinister than most are prepared to look into. And that you could be very, very right. Ooh. Dang. Translucent gets a gold star. Boom. I thought Dylan could have been more low-key chilling with Ian Harsh, in my opinion. Y'all, we need to look at Ian Harsh a little stronger. I'm sorry. I can't let him go. I can't. Could he be the connection to BK? I mean, how he was into the big H rug. That's what Kohlberger had in his past. He's right next to the house there. And he could have planted a sheath, maybe. I don't know. I'm asking. Oklahoma Nana says, Dylan don't even fit as a sorority gore girl to me. Shady ASF. If their chess game they discuss, they have their king there, prison guy. But why not a queen in place setting it all up? I don't know. Dana Lynn Polly Putman says, Robin, I do think he dropped her off unaware she was. Unaware as she. BF saw the carnage and passed out. Wouldn't that be something in the need of BK going, I'm here to help you. Oh, shit. And getting the hell out of there. Well, my lovelies. I think we've said it all today. We've left it all out there. What an emotional roller coaster. <clears throat> I had a little breakdown today about Maddie Soto, and I lost a very important person, a little girl named Chelsea Rose, and I had a little breakdown today. Um, but I am feeling better. It did help me. And I want to say humbly thank you to every one of you that stood by me through that live and did not judge me, that just let me had that moment because I go live so often. I don't think about it. I don't get nervous. I think of it as like calling my very best friend. And so when I have my moments, I'm not always alone away from a camera. Sometimes, like today happened, I had a true breakdown. Like a mental, like crying, snot bubble fit. And I'm sorry for those that became uncomfortable. And it's never my intention to make you uncomfortable. Um, and so for those of you that needed a trigger warning that Mama D was going to have a little mental breakdown, I'm sorry, babes. I didn't even know I was going to have one. So I just want to get that out there. Open Mind Perspective says, yeah, blood becomes really, really dark. And what about them showing it rolls so chat is just flying about what they're showing us is right red bright red this is my wondering what if it's crisis right there's some shit going down y'all It makes you wonder something. I'm going to be asking a huge, huge question tomorrow, and it's going to be the furthest. It's going to be the largest, most wildest conspiracy theory ever. And I'd love to say it's mine, but it's not. I can't take credit for it. But I'm going to be sharing a theory tomorrow, even though it's from an anonymous source, and I respect them greatly. Um, this theory is not about... Any certain suspect. This theory is not about the victims specifically. This is a great, huge, huge conspiracy theory. So, I'm going to play it out for you guys to think about. It's not my theory, but I will share it. Heaven Reigns 27 
beautiful months with you. I love you, Mama D. 27 beautiful, beautiful, blessed months, Heaven Rain. I love you. We have had so many blessings together. We have been on highs and we have been on lows. I think you have been with me like from the very, very start of members. I really do. Yes, 60 more charges on the um, partner, boyfriend, stepdaddy, Stern, the monster. 60 more charges, unrelated. And they're bad. I had to go look up one of the words. They're atrocious. And if you don't want to hear me have my breakdown, cut the video at about 30 minutes. Just tune out after that because you don't need to. <laughs> you don't need to feel that. Born to Boy Wild says, Pers open mind perspectives. Do you have the source for that, please? I'd like to go look at that picture of them who sat in the circle. Oh, I gotta look it up. Bethany left. She didn't stay that whole night. She came back the next morning, eight hours later. That is why she is able to stay off the witness list, in my opinion. Oh, goodness, goodness, y'all. I don't know if that's all true or not. All right, my lovelies. So we're going to be doing a couple videos, maybe both tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. But I want to do a video that talks about Ian Harsh and the BK connection, if any. Okay. I want to do the hugest, biggest conspiracy theory tomorrow. So... Um, I'll probably break them up and do one on Wednesday and one on Thursday. Give me, um, let's get the algorithm rolling and get your opinion on the board. If you would like to see, <clears throat> give me a one for the Ian Harsh video tomorrow. Give me a two if you want the biggest conspiracy theory ever, which is like huge. Tomorrow. Did BK drop BF off at the ATM? Oh, in the AM. Sorry. I can't read, Yvonne. <laughs> oh, you said, Yvonne Cross says, Ian Harsh is someone to take notice of, in my opinion. Okay, we've got a couple ones. So we're going Ian Harsh. Nope, I got three twos, three ones. Oh, it's right down the line. I'll count this when I'm done here. <laughs> Grammy H has got two, 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 two. Bow, says Sassy. All right. We'll play it by ear. Stay tuned. It's probably going to be in, in a harsh, I'm going to tell you now. <clears throat> oh, that's a lot of twos, y'all. That's a lot of ones. I do see more twos. So the biggest theory yet. I'll play it by ear. Maybe I'll, I'll, I don't know, you guys. Man, talking about walking the fence. We got ones and twos. That's the most balanced talk about going back to the beginning of ability. We've got balance and probability here. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I love you. Jennifer Swain says, night, everyone. Thank you, Jennifer, for the biggest, largest snooper chats of all time. Because you've always been such a consistent giver. I want to say thank you. I am so grateful for you and all of you. Thank you to my beautiful mods. I just thank you. And the Grammy goes to, I love ya, to the moon and back. God bless you all. Pray for justice.